At Rackspace, we're real, really proud to have Docker here in the studio uh, today. They are uh, helping developers uh, deliver and test and build uh, software on data centers. And uh, we're going to find out all about that. It's the hottest company in the data center space right now. A lot of developers are using it, including us at Rackspace. So we're going to see Docker right now. Hey, I'm Ben Gollum. Who are you? Hi, I'm Ben Golub. I'm CEO of Docker. Um, I've been in tech for a long time. This is now my fifth startup. Uh, like you, I grew up in Cupertino, so my first Silicon Valley job was cutting apricots. But uh, since that time, I've done population research in Kenya, tried to start a business school in Uzbekistan, spent time at Sun, at VeriSign, uh, and most recently was uh, CEO of Gluster, and before that I was CEO of Plaxo. What is, what is Docker for the, the few people who don't know it? And Doc, this is a developer talk, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you do things for developers, so if you're not a developer, we'll see you later. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. For the non-developers, I say we're basically like a shipping container system for code. But for developers, yeah. basically, we make it possible to take any application and its dependencies, package it up in a lightweight container that will then run anywhere. So as a developer, you go from spending lots and lots of time worrying about how you're going to build your code, how you're going to run it, whether it's going to run the same way on your laptop as it does in testing or staging or production or any of 10 different clouds, and we basically take all that problem away. Yeah. And it's quite hot lately, because I've yeah. heard about Docker from a lot of people yeah. across the industry. I won't name names, because I'll <laughs> screw one of them up and somebody will <laughs> yell okay. at me for talking about a customer. But, uh, why is it, why was this needed? Well, I think, you know, if you look at a lot of the tools that are out there today, they were basically built 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, applications were long live, they'd lived for a long time, they were monolithic, and they were designed to run on a single server. And all three of those things have changed, right? So these days, people want to develop constantly, you don't build a, a you know, an application up from the ground, you basically take lots of loosely coupled components and stitch them together, and it could run on thousands of servers, right? And it needs to move from developer all the way through the production, and once in production, scale across a cluster, move to a cloud, go to a customer site, et cetera. If you haven't used Docker, what do you need to know about it? How, how do you get, get into the yeah. Docker world? Well, I mean, if you, if you want to get into the Docker world, yeah, you can go to our website. We have a 15-minute tutorial uh, that is so simple that even I and our CFO have gone through it uh, successfully. But um, basically, you know, what you need to know is that Docker is a pretty generic tool, right? And a pretty easy to get into tool, right? So if, you, if you've got an application, uh, you really have to change very little. You know, you can take your application uh, and, uh, you know, with a couple of lines on, on a CLI, uh, you can basically build your application, define your dependencies, and then you know that that container that we've built will run on your laptop or on any other Linux server, whether it's a VM or a server running Red Hat or a server running Canonical or a Rackspace server or an Amazon server, et cetera. And so first thing you know is it's really easy. Second thing is uh, if you happen to be in a company, your sysadmin will actually be really happy with you because suddenly all of that craziness that developers like to do, they like to try new things and break things, that doesn't impact the sysadmin because the, sort of the outside of the container, if you will, always stays the same always starts the same way, stops the same way, logs the same way, introspects the same way. So it makes life really easy for a whole host of people. Now, if, if uh, I'm, a, I'm not a Docker user, I probably am not using sysadmin tools like Chef or Puppet right. or, or Ansible. Or, or there's Ansible a whole or bunch of yeah, 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 here, yeah. Right? There's a whole new modern tool suite for the modern developer, right? Uh, that's right. Um, but with, with Docker, um, in essence, you can take, take Take your code, right? Build your container. Often you just do it automatically because we can integrate with your source code uh, repository system. And then basically that container can get picked up and used by Chef or Puppet or Salt or Ansible or Travis or Jenkins or any of these other tools. Uh, and it, it can use them without you having to rescript every time that you create a new app. Yeah. So, how, yeah. How do you get paid? How much is this going to cost this developer? Uh, developer, absolutely not. Right. Um, how do you get paid then? <laughs> you know, it's interesting because uh, our investors ask the same we question. We make it up in volume. We make it up in volume. Yeah, no, no, no money. We make it up in volume. Yeah. Um, well, so it's it's fairly it's fairly straightforward for us, right? So we're an open source project, um, and honestly, we've been focusing primarily on getting 
uh, ubiquitous. Um, but if you're using Docker today, we also provide something called Docker Hub, which is a hub you can go to. Sort of think of it sort of as you know, equivalent to, to GitHub. Yeah. It's a place for you to collaborate, to find content, um, to push things to the cloud. Um, if you're doing that all in public, it's free. If you want a hosted private version of that, you pay. Yeah. Uh, and if you're an enterprise and you want to start deploying Docker, and now we've got you know, large banks and large government institutions and healthcare organizations who are all deploying Docker now, uh, we'll sell support and we'll sell some uh, more sophisticated management and monitoring orchestration tools. Very cool. And beginners should know, you know, right now this is designed for Linux. So if you're writing Linux apps to run on uh, Linux servers, it's great. Uh, so if, if you're doing Windows development, it's like uh, Windows development, you need to wait until next year. Yeah. But everything we're talking about will be able to work on on Windows. You know, other important thing I think to understand is that this is uh, different from a VM. So you know, a VM was designed back in the day when again, you know, apps were long lived and monolithic and ran on a single server. So a VM basically you know takes a single purpose physical server and turns it into a single purpose virtual server. So you take you know, if your model is how do I take my Microsoft Exchange server and my Mac print server and run them all on the, on the same physical device. You take a you know, application measured in megabytes, combine it with an operating system measured in gigabytes, you know, package that whole thing up. With, with Docker, it's a lot more like what you do with apps on your phone. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you download Angry Birds, you don't download a VM. Right. <laughs> you, know, you just get something down quickly and it, it's actually in a container um, and it doesn't screw up your address book or anything like that. We do the same thing only for a far more complicated world of, uh, of backend server stuff, but Depending on what you're doing, you can save 20 to 80 times in terms of CPU and storage, et cetera, over what you'd have with uh, with a VM. So, does, so I assume it works on Rackspace Cloud, Amazon. Oh, actually, Google. Which, which, yeah, uh, so it works cloud. on all works on all of those clouds. And you know, I just have to say that you know, Rackspace is one of the early users. Uh, the guys at Mailgun were actually using us back when we were version 0.3, uh, and now Rackspace has some things like On Metal that are specifically designed to work screamingly fast with Docker, which is which is very cool. Uh, explain why on metal is screaming fast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so um, yeah, you can run a Docker. That's Rackspace's uh, yeah, yeah. uh, non VM server, right? That's right, right. So you can run. That's why it's called on metal. It's on metal, exactly. Yeah. All the way down. So you can absolutely run Docker in a VM, and for a lot of people, that's the right answer. But if you don't want to have sort of any overhead between your application and uh, your servers, uh, you can run Docker on on metal, and basically. All Docker needs is a Linux kernel uh, that's sufficiently modern. And that's how OnMetal is set up. So that yeah. if you're doing a big data application or you just want to be super efficient or super fast, you know, you can run hundreds or thousands of Docker containers on you know, one OnMetal server, get great performance, uh, and scale it to the cloud, scale it between Rackspace and on-premise, all these other great things. Very cool. Maybe we should uh, uh, get a look at it and yeah. get geekier. <laughs> let, let, let's geek out. All right. <laughs> let's geek out. Okay. All right. So, so what you're going to basically see is how a work group might use Docker. So this combines Docker uh, open source with um, uh, Docker Hub. So basically, what you're going to see is that we take uh, from a local workstation, and in fact, uh, from a local source code, we're going to make a change to an application. We're going to build the Docker container automatically. Uh, from source using something called a Docker file. That container is going to be picked up by Jenkins and go through a set of automated tests. And then we're going to deploy it in seconds to Amazon, to IBM, to Google, to Rackspace, and to a local server. All right, so uh, Nathan right now is uh, in his uh, source code. And he's going to make a change. We're going to do a really simple app. He's going to take something that says, hello world, and instead say, uh, hello Robert. Uh, and you'll see that we have in, uh, in brackets there the name of the service provider because when you're going to see it running it, Amazon is going to say, hello, Robert from Amazon, hello, Robert from Google, et cetera. Okay. Okay. So you know this is real. All right. So he's basically made this change. He's going to commit his change. And this can be Nathan acting as an individual or Nathan as part of a dev team who's working with a, the QA team, et cetera. So he's pushed, uh, he's committed. And it's going to kick off a build. And uh, you see here, it's also getting picked up by Jenkins, uh, which is one of those great uh, DevOps tools that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins is going to run a set of automated tests. And my eyesight isn't good enough to see how things are going, so I'm going to need uh, Nathan to give me the thumbs up when, uh, uh, when it's done. Yeah. So this is our output. Again, you know, you've sort of seen a switch from Docker Hub over to Jenkins just to show you what Jenkins is doing. Yeah. Um, and when, he is, uh, when it's done building, uh, we're going to deploy it. 
and you know other things that you could do while you're in Docker Hub. You can invite members of your team. Uh, you can explore our library of pre-Dockerized image, and and at this point, the community has contributed over twenty thousand Dockerized applications. Wow. Right. Uh, what are some of those applications? What, what well, I mean, so it, it's apps? everything from, you know, you, you might want Redis, or you might want Django, uh, or some of the base components, or people have their, uh, you know, they, they might have their, their WordPress application in there, right? So it sort of runs the gamut. But generally speaking, again, people these days build applications uh, by stitching together lots of components, yeah. right? So, you know, with Docker, you know, if you want to write a LAMP app to be old school, uh, you don't need the L because you get that from any Linux server, right? Yep. Uh, you know, you could start by going to Docker Hub and getting your A, your M, and your P, and then you put your changes on top. Or you can stitch together, put each of those, your A, your M, and your P, and there's sort of two big categories of things people use this for. One is, let me take that painful process of going from development to test and QA and production and have that take, you know, minutes or seconds rather than having it, it take weeks with lots of fighting. Yep. Now the second thing is once you've built an app, how do I scale it? Uh, how do I move between on-premise and the cloud, or how do I scale it massively across a cluster because it's some big data app? Uh, and so you see a lot of that stuff happen. But in terms of the apps that people are using, it runs the gamut from you know, one-person shops who are doing you know, cool, uh, cool little web apps, uh, all the way up to people running really sophisticated uh, systems, including like Gilt and Groupon. <laughs> and, uh, it's finished? Okay, so, so what Nathan's gonna do right now is he's gonna basically deploy it. And you're gonna see that we can deploy it to uh, to uh, a bunch of different uh, uh, service providers. We can also obviously show it running directly on his uh, laptop as well. And um, basically the only thing that's taking time here, we're not rebuilding the container, we're not changing the container, we're not modifying it, it's just a matter of time of getting it pushed up to, uh, to these service providers. And it looks like uh, one of them is almost done. And then we will go to each of those sites. Now again, this whole, this container's already gone, been tested, yep. it's already been built. Um, and in a second here, one of these is going to go green. Cool. How many? How many total? Uh, so right now we are simultaneously I deploying to four different uh, four different places. So we've also got Google spaces. there, and we probably have Rackspace. Uh, I don't know if we have Rackspace set up for this demo, but actually Rackspace works really well. Rackspace probably would have been green by now, but <laughs> there we go. All right, I'll, I'll agree. All right, and now since we built it, let's actually prove that that this isn't just demoware. Uh, so Nathan, why don't you go and show our app running at uh, uh, at Amazon? Yeah. And show it running at SoftLayer, right? Yeah. Again, this is something that would have taken months. <laughs> you know, you know, obviously a more complicated app, but it would take a long time to get it built and tested. Yeah. And then to try and move an app from one data center to another, you know, used to be impossible. Yeah. Right. And now you can move it to whoever's providing you the best service, or you can move it on premise, wherever things matter. Where do you think this is going? In 16 months, what are you going to be doing that's different than today? Well, I mean, I, th I think what we're starting to see is people doing a lot more complicated apps, a lot bigger organizations starting to use this in production. We just we just released 1.0 uh, at the beginning of last month, um, and so there were you know a lot more conservative organizations like banks and healthcare organizations and uh, government agencies that were waiting for that to start deploying. But um, you know, so I think there's a huge change in the types of people who are using it, but we're also seeing a big cultural change. I mean, you know, there's, there's this whole notion of DevOps that says, hey, if we can just get developers and operators to agree on a set of tools and understand each other's point of view, yeah. then sing kumbaya, everything will work. And as, as you and I know, right, I mean, developers like to try new things, combine new things, break things, and ops guys like things to be stable and consistent and performant and secure, and they're both right. But getting those people to agree is really difficult. Yeah. With Docker, it, in essence, you know, Developers worry about what's on the inside of the container, and the ops guys worry about what's on the outside of the container. And developers can be true to who they are, yeah. and ops can be true to who they are. So there's this huge cultural revolution where suddenly these warring parties are actually getting along really well. Yeah. And so I think you're gonna see a huge cultural change that happens from Docker. Look, there, there are now 9,000 projects built on top of Docker, so you're also gonna see a huge Docker ecosystem being built. Yep. Um, and I think you're gonna see us you know, extend into Windows and, and other things like that as well. So. It seems to me that if you were building a modern development team, that there's a suite of services that, uh -huh. that yeah. are common. 
new relic is one that's been here sure. uh, the devops tools whether it's chef or puppet or whatever seems yeah. to be and docker seems to be one is that yeah. is that correct are you seeing the same kind of yeah i mean so i, th I think best of i think in general suite? what what you're seeing is that people want to you know develop constantly you know have lots of loosely coupled components and they don't want to worry about servers anymore right yeah you know they want to run on the infrastructure that that is best for them yeah. and they don't want to have to worry about moving things between servers uh, uh, or worry about what server is where, right? They just want to write their apps. I mean, you kind of think about like how the internet works. Like when I send you a message on the internet, I don't care which routers it goes through, yeah. right? It just kind of goes, right? Because they're all packaged up the same way. Yeah. And I think for apps, you kind of want the same thing. You want to just push a button and have it run somewhere, right? Yeah. And packaging it up the right way matters. And then once you do that in a consistent way, then monitoring it with things like New Relic becomes a whole lot easier. Testing it with Jenkins or Travis uh, works better. Um, doing configuration management with things like Salt uh, or Chef and Puppet becomes a lot easier. So what you're going to see, I think, you know, based off of Docker and a lot of these other tools, is I mean, nothing less than a revolution. I think where sort of like creating awesome code is decoupled from the pain of running. Uh, the machines that it's supposed to run on. Do you see uh, mistakes that pe people make? Uh, it seems fairly straightforward, so I'm not sure what mistakes they would make. But yeah. do you do you see any tips? Or you know, I think the real mistakes I think people make is is they're sort of they're still stuck in that mindset that says an application has to equal an application sitting on a server, and you know the way I move things around, the way I test them is as if I were testing a server, even if it's a virtual server. And with Docker, you can really change all that mindset, right? You can change how you test, how you secure, how you scale um, by worrying about apps. And again, you know, people who work on the back end on apps should start thinking about apps the same way that people who work on you know, mobile apps do. Yeah. It's lightweight, easy, easy to update, easy to move around, et cetera. Very cool. So we're going to get another demo on yeah. the command line. OK. Yeah, what are we going to see here? One of my favorite use cases of Docker here. It, we're in the command line. We're seeing a new, uh, a new Docker run app. Uh -huh. Minus I for interactive T for terminal mode. Minus I yeah. and T for terminal mode. Uh -huh. And then super test 2014 slash neon is the name. Super test 2014 neon, okay. All right. Like neon cat. And there we <laughs> go. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and it's funny, but you know, to do that in any other way would take a really long time. Docker really is also uh, helping commoditize the cloud, isn't it? Because you can move things around to right. Amazon, Rackspace, Google. That's right. <laughs> what I hear from your guys is they like us because it makes it possible for people to move to the best That's, provider. And as long as like you're the best provider, lowest cost, uh, best service, yeah. It'll go there. And that's that's really important, and yeah, it's uh, yeah. certainly helping us internally to make make our systems work right. So thank awesome. you so much. Uh, where do we learn more about it? Uh, so you can go to www.docker.com, uh, and that's also a great place to do an interactive tutorial, learn about it, and or find one of the 200 meetups around the world that are happening where you can really talk to other people and what they're doing with Docker. One last thing. Wait, tell me a little bit about the company. How did you get this funded? And, uh, and, uh, okay. And what's the fundamentals behind it? Sure. The well, the, the, the history of the, of the company it was sort of uh, the brilliant idea of a guy named Solomon Hikes, uh, who is now our, uh, our CTO and chief architect. He started Docker as a platform as a service company, like a Heroku or an engine yard. And then he said, you know what? That's interesting, but the stuff that we're using behind the scenes is a lot cooler. And that was sort of the pre, uh, you know, precursor to Docker. Yeah. Uh, he spoke to me, uh, and we sort of relaunched this company, pivoted it at the beginning of 2013. And honestly, from the day we released Docker as open source, uh, things just started taking off. It's a real testament to the power of Obviously, brilliance of, the, of Solomon and the team behind it, but also just the power of open source and really embracing it. Very cool. Thanks for coming in and uh, hey. talking to me about it, and thanks for what you're doing for uh, the cloud computing. Awesome.